Hello everybody and welcome back to a new showcase. Today is the final part of the Alex's Mobs showcase and this will include all the mobs from update 1.14 to 1.20. All enchantments, banner patterns and super secret settings and then I think I would have gone through everything. I'll leave the previous parts in the description below so don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into the good stuff. But first, I was informed that the sunbird can actually be attracted by activated beacons so if you have one you'll soon have a sunbird right there next to it. I also forgot to mention the Thyme Music Disc, which can be obtained when bartering with seals, and is again, a great tune made by Ludocrypt. I've also realised that you can use the mandibles from the Void Worm to create a Void Worm beak, as I've said in the previous video, and you can actually use this with redstone to create a trap, instead of using the Void Worm a figgy, which is what I got a bit confused with in the last episode, so sorry about that. The first mob today is the Toucan, and these birds can be found flying in the trees of the jungles. They can come in 7 different variants, and only some are you able to get by doing certain things with them. A cool little thing is that if you feed the Toucan a fruit that drops from a tree, like an apple or a banana, then it can have a small chance to plant a sapling of that type of tree. An oak sapling if given an apple, and a jungle sapling if given a banana. If you feed the Toucan a golden apple, it will temporarily turn to gold, and plant saplings at a faster rate, but if you feed it an enchanted golden apple, it doesn't have to be fed fruit constantly, if you wish for them to plant saplings. You can also breed Toucans with eggs, a small Easter egg is that if you name a Toucan Sam, it will turn them into Toucan Sam, which is the mascot for Fruit Loops. The next mob in this list is the Maned Wolf, which can be found in Savannas. This passive creature is quite a unique mob as it can't be tamed, but can be used in other ways. You can feed them apples, and when doing so, it will shake and any nearby animals will be attracted to it. What's even better is that it will increase the production of fungus in nearby leafcutter anthills. You can breed the Maned Wolves with rabbit or chicken meat. You can also make the Maned Wolf dance if you start playing music in a jukebox around them. A cool little easter egg is that if you name them Plummet, it will turn the Maned Wolf into an end-themed skin, which references a meme that was started in their Discord server. The next mob on our list is the Anaconda, and this massive mob can be found on land or in the lakes of swamps. You may find them in both green and yellow variant. Don't get close to this mob though, unless you feed it chicken to pacify it, otherwise it will slowly start to suffocate you and then swallow you whole. If this is done to a mob, it won't drop any items, understandably as the Anaconda will just eat it. Once it's eaten a couple of meals, it will start to shed its skin and become discoloured, dropping shed snake skin. You can use this in crafting to create a vine lasso, which, when used, can be thrown onto a mob to transport it. You won't be able to tie it to any fence however, unlike the lead. If you wish to breed the anaconda, you can do so by feeding it chicken, which, as I've said, can also be used to pacify them. The next mob on this list is the Anteater, which are neutral mobs found in the jungles. Don't pick a fight with these mobs as they have sharp claws which will deal some serious damage. You can tell by their name that they like to eat ants, so you may not see many around them. Although, if it finds an ant hill, it will rummage through it, from which it will uncover dirt, rooted dirt, pupae, various tubers, fungus and more items. If you wish to breed the Anteaters, you can do so with Leafcutter Ant Pupae. And a cool little detail is that baby Anteaters can ride the backs of adult Anteaters. A cool little easter egg is that if you name it Peter, it will turn into a new skin, which references is the UCI's Anteaters mascot. The next mob on our list is the Rocky Roller which is a hostile mob found in the Dripstone Caves and is the first mob added in the 1.15 update. This mob attacks in a more unique way than the other mobs in this mod and will roll at an accelerated speed towards its target, crushing it. If you do manage to kill it, it has a chance to drop Rocky Shell. This can be used in crafting to create a Rocky Shell chestplate which enables you to roll and attack like the Rocky Roller when you sprint. This won't deal a great amount of damage but this is a much better alternative to sprinting due to the speed and you will also take reduced fall damage. Make sure you take this off when swimming however as you will sink due to its heavy weight. Our next mob is the Flutter, which is a small passive creature found in the Lush Caves biome. Funnily enough, you can tame these guys with 4-6 to six different types of flowers. This core companion is great when defending its owner, as it will shoot homing pollen balls onto the enemy, dealing damage. You can even give these little guys some armour by giving it a plant pot, which will also let you pick them up and put them in your inventory. If they do get injured, you can heal them with flowers. You can also breed flutters with bone meal, and any nearby azalea leaves or bushes that are close by have a chance to bloom as well. If you decide to kill a flutter, they have a chance to drop a spore blossom. Next up is the Gelada Monkey, and this neutral mob can be found in herds in the high altitude meadow biomes. They can be seen grooming each other, and being territorial, they will have a leader with a large mane. Don't anger these though, as they will become aggressive. If you come across them, they can be fed wheat, and when done so, they will destroy most of the long grass in the area around. You can also breed Gelada Monkeys if you feed them dead bushes. 
onto our next mob now and this is the Jaboa and this is the first mob in the 1.16 update. These little guys can only be found in deserts at night and will normally sleep throughout the day. They are prey to some mobs such as rattlesnakes, cats and foxes but they are passive so will just try to escape. If you have seeds in your hand the Jaboa will beg for them like the raccoon does and when given it, it will reward its feeder with the buff fleet footed. This buff will give you speed when running and jumping at the same time which is very useful. You can feed the Jaboa some maggots or other small insects such as crimson mosquito larvae and leaf cutter and pupae to breed them which will also stop them from despawning. This next mob is the Terrapin, which is a small reptile found in the ice-free river biomes. You can bucket up these little guys, and if instead you want to jump on it, it will retreat back into its shell. When you jump on it again, it will spin in the direction you are facing and ricochet off any wall it hits, a lot like Koopa Troopers in Super Mario. If the spinning turtle hits a mob, it can deal quite a bit of damage, but instead of the mob being aggressive to the innocent turtle, it will be aggressive to the one responsible for the one launching it at them. The Terrapin has over 800 different variants, some of which are only acquired when they are bred. You can breed the Terrapins if you feed them some seagrass grass and they will then go and lay one to four eggs which you can break and collect if you wish once they are hatched they should show in a variant which is a cross between the parents but there is a chance for the baby hatching to be a completely random variant a cool little easter egg is that if you name one koopa it will turn it into koopa trooper from super mario Next on our list is the Comb Jelly, which is a passive mob found in the frozen oceans. These spectacles can come in a range of different colours and can be bucketed up. If you decide you wanted to kill one of these, it can have a chance to drop Rainbow Jelly, which can be used in a range of different ways. You can give this to a mob, and when done so, it will turn the mob into a rainbow pattern, changing colours constantly. You can even apply this to yourself if you eat it. However, you can remove this from a mob if a sponge is used on it, and you can also just right click with the sponge to get rid of this when it's on you. You can also use the Rainbow Jelly to craft Rainbow Glass, which, when placed, changes colour based on where it is in the world. This rainbow glass also emits light. Next up is the Cosmic Cod, which are small mobs found in schools flying around the end. Unlike their distant cousins, they actually get damaged by water. They are a pain to kill as they will teleport away if any of its school is attacked. If they are killed, they will drop Cosmic Cod, and as mentioned in the previous video, they can be used to tame Cosmos. You can also eat the Cosmic Cod. If you do have a bucket handy, you can also bucket them up. Our next mob is the Bun Fungus, which can be found very rarely in the Mushroom Biomes and is the first mob in the 1.17 update. This mob can also be created when a rabbit is given multiple mongol spores. These defensive mobs will attack any monster it finds on the Mushroom Biomes, dealing massive damage in a large area, but there's no need to be afraid as they are neutral towards you, unless you attack it. But you can pacify them completely if you give them carrots, which will also grant them strength and regeneration for a short time. Even though they are very active at night, killing monsters and protecting the Mushroom Biomes, they can be seen sleeping through the day. The next mob is the bison, which are neutral mobs found in the plains, snowy plains and the meadows. Although they won't go for you, they will defend itself and fling them into the air. If anyone does get close, so make sure to keep your distance. If you wanted to kill a bison, they can drop a lot of beef, but instead if you wanted to keep them alive, you could shear them if you can get close to them. The bison fur can be used to craft some brown wool or a block of bison fur, which can then be used to create bison fur carpet. A block of bison fur can also be used in a smithing table to make your boots insulated from snow, which will allow you to walk through powdered snow better. If you do shear a bison, they will need a lot of grass to regain its coat of fur. They are quite useful for clearing snow however, as they will just clear it by walking through it. You can also breed bison with wheat. Like the moose and the bear, when it's snowing, the bison will gather snow on its back, which can be cleared with a shovel, water, rain or a hot biome. The next mob on this list is the giant squid, which can only be found in deep oceans. Don't be scared to go near them though as they are neutral, but their eyes will change size. They will however attack guardians and fishes. If you do decide to kill the giant squid, it will drop many ink sacs, but if it is attacked by a catchlot whale, it will have a chance to lose a tentacle, and drop a lost tentacle. This can be used in crafting to create a grappling squawk, which, when used, will allow you to shoot up to four tentacles, which will latch onto any surface, but you can sneak to reel them all back in. A lot like the blobfish and field shark, the giant squid can become depressurized when in less than 10 blocks of water pressure, and show in a paler skin. A rare occurrence is that when a regular squid is struck by lightning, it will transform into a blue giant squid. Next up is the first mob in the 1.18 update, called the Devil's Hole Pupfish, which is a very rare mob found in only one chunk of your world. To find the chunk, you must create the Strange Fish Finder, which is created with an echolocator. This will then send sound waves towards the direction of the Devil's Hole Pupfish. When you get there, they will be found chasing each other around. If there are mossy blocks in the submerged area, they will eat the scum off of it, which will drop slime balls. They cannot be bred by the player, as when they have finished eating the scum, they will occasionally find a pupfish to breed with. If you wish to take them home, you could do so with a bucket, like most fish. 
The next mob on the list is the catfish, and these guys can be found in swamps and rivers in three different sizes, where only the large can be found in swamps. If they see anything in the water, they will suck it up with their mouth and eat it, including items, fish, and anything that is shorter than a block, which also includes mobs. Small catfish can store up to three stacks of items in their stomach, medium catfish can store nine stacks, and a large catfish can store only one mob at a time. They can regurgitate anything it swallowed if attacked or if it encounters a sea pickle. Sea lanterns are a great way to lure catfish, as they are attracted towards them. You can capture a catfish if you bucket it up, and this includes all sizes. What's even better is that the items in the catfish's stomach will be preserved, so it is a great way to transport items and a mop. Like many other fish, once they have been bucketed up, they will not despawn. Our next mob is the flying fish, which can be found at the surface of the lukewarm oceans. These guys come in a few different variants, but are prey to seals and dolphins. They can be seen flying out of water and gliding through the air, which is where they got their names from. These guys can be bucketed up like most other fish. If you decide to kill this, it can drop a flying fish, which can be used to craft flying fish boots. These boots are extremely useful, especially with an elytra, as they allow you to glide when you jump out of water. When used correctly, it will give a much bigger boost. Next up is the Skellywag, and these hostile and creepy looking mobs can be found in dark waters, close to the sunken ships. They will attack you and any dolphin to stop it from getting to it, dealing large amounts of damage. Occasionally, a drown can be seen riding one, making these even more creepier than before. If you do manage to kill one of these, they have a chance to drop fish bones, which can be used to craft bone meal, and the strange fish finder, which is used to find the devil's whole pupfish. It also has a chance to drop a Skellywag skull, which can be used as a weapon, and although it has low damage, it attacks very quickly, and can be used to parry hits with a shield. The Skellywag also has a very small chance to drop the novelty hat, which is an aesthetic item you can wear on your head, which references to Spongebob's soda drink hat. Onto the first mob added in update 1.19 now, and this is the rain frog, which is found in the desert biomes on rainy days. They can be seen burrowing themselves into the ground beneath them, and when they are attacked or feel threatened, they will puff up and make a loud squeaking noise. You can feed the rain frogs and maggots if you wish to breed them, but they will scavenge for any small insect items such as crimson mosquito larvae. If you use a shovel on a burrowed rain frog, it won't despawn. A cool little thing is that if you play music near them, the rain will clear and it will become sunny, which is a great mechanic. The next mob is the Potu, and these birds can be found in dark forest biomes. They can be seen on branches of the dark forest trees and will be asleep through the day, being slightly more active at night. They will stay perched unless they spot an insect flying close to them. If the Potu is in a light level low enough for monsters to spawn, it will start to shriek and the size of its eyes will increase. Although they can't be tamed, they can be handled with a falconry glove, which is an easy way to move them around. You can also breed them with maggots. Next up is the Mud Skipper, and these passive mobs can be found in mangrove swamps. Although they resemble a fish, they actually spend more time walking on land, and when two meet each other, they can be seen raising their fins to assert dominance. You can tame Mud Skippers if you feed them some lobster tails, and when the owner is injured, the Mud Skipper will protect you by spitting mud balls at the enemy, damaging and slowing them. These guys can also be bred with insect larvae, such as crimson mosquito larvae, or some lobster tails. Next on our list is the Rhinoceros, and these neutral mobs can be found in groups in savannas. They will attack pillagers however, as they can be considered poachers, so we'll rid them from the world. But make sure you don't annoy them as well, as they are powerful mobs that can deal some serious damage quickly. You can pacify these guys with wheat, as they are defensive animals and won't be too sure to trust you. If you decide to use a potion on the Rhino, the potion's effect will linger on the Rhino's horn, and it will inflict the effect onto anything it attacks. These potions will only last on the Rhino for around 15 to 20 seconds. If you do get into some trouble, the Rhinos will come to protect you if you have already fed them wheat. They will also protect and roam around any nearby villages to help protect it. If you wish to breed rhinos, it can be done with some tall grass or dead bushes. Next up is the Sugar Glider, and these small marsupials can be found in birch forests and can often be seen climbing trees. You can actually tame these small guys with sweet berries, and you can place them onto your head with shift right clicking them. When they are on your head, they let you glide with them, and so you will slowly fall. They can occasionally look through leaves if they are tamed, and most of the time they can find junk, but they can have a chance to find more valuable items, such as hair of bears. If you wish to have more of these, then you can breed them with some honeycombs. Onto our final update of Alex's mobs, and this is known as the Farseer, which can rarely spawn at the border of the world. This trippy looking mob is completely hostile and spawns in a really unique way by coming out of a dimensional portal. To help you get to the edge of your world, you can create a shattered dimensional carver, and when you use this, it will take you 1 million blocks in the direction you are facing when creating the portal. It can attack with both a melee and range attack, both of which can pierce armor and enchantments, so don't think it will be an easy fight. Don't give up though, because if you do manage to kill it, it can drop a Farseer arm, and when this is crafted with some obsidian and and a nether star, it can create a transmutation table. 
This device is great as it can turn any stackable item into a choice of three new items. You see, when you interact with the table, it brings up a new screen in which a choice of three new items can be transmuted from one item placed at the box at the bottom. This will require you to have some XP if you wish to transmutate. If one item is transmutated into another, there is a chance the item will be one of the future transmutation possibilities. Make sure that where you place it is where you want to keep it, otherwise when you break it, it will violently explode, leaving just the nether star and a big crater, with no farseer arms or knowledge. The next mob in this list is the Screecher, and this hostile mob can be found on the roofs of the Deep Dark. Although I said it is hostile, it can't hurt you, but make a loud enough noise to awaken the Warden by clapping its feet and howling, pretty much screwing you over. However, the Warden will also attack the Screecher, so it's not all bad, but make sure to keep this nuisance of a mob quiet by hitting it with a projectile, as it will temporarily disable it, knocking it to the ground, giving you the chance to take it out completely. Once you do kill it, it can drop a Screecher soul, which can then be used to create a Skulk Boomer. This Skulk Boomer will create a loud boom when activated by Skull Sensor, damaging mobs in the area around it. You can disable this, however, if you use a redstone signal next to it. Our next mob is the Underminer, and these passive mobs can be found wandering the mine shafts. These strange beings can walk through walls and blocks, and isn't able to take damage from physical damage. You can hit them with magic damage though, such as splash potions. Good luck trying to get close to them, as they will disappear, and only reappear when you aren't near it. What you should look out for, however, is them mining blocks, because even though they're not able to, they're not doing it for no reason. If you mine it where they just were, it can have some ore beneath it. If you have some ore blocks handy, you can drop it for the Underminer to pick up. It will then seek out blocks in the surrounding area that may be obstructing your view from seeing more of that block. If you do manage to kill the Underminer, it does have a chance to drop the Ghostly Pickaxe, which has a decent amount of pickaxe power. It also has a cool system where if your inventory is full, you can store up to 9 stacks of blocks and ore which were broken by the pickaxe. Once your inventory has been cleared of items, the Ghostly Pickaxe will return the items to your inventory immediately. If you need to repair the pickaxe, it can be done so with Phantom Membranes. Onto the final mob in the 1.20 update, and this is the Murmur, which can be found in deep cave biomes, which is below level Y-30. You may be thinking that they don't look very harmful, but that is because they are disguising to be like a normal person, when they are a deadly, hostile, serpent-like creature. They attack by extending their head to a distance over 50 blocks, so there is a small chance to outrun one of these. It will bite you when it gets the chance, and will retreat, making it hard to hit. Make sure to aim for the body though, as the head only takes half as much damage. If you do manage to kill one of these monsters, it can drop an elastic tendon, which, when used in crafting with some drop bear claws and a stick, can be used to create a tendon whip. This whip is a great weapon, as it can chain up to three enemies when you attack with it, but will deal less damage as it hits more enemies. It can be used by over eight blocks away and will find a target automatically. The murmur also has a small chance to drop an unsettling kimono, which can be worn by the player. If this is worn, it will only give a small amount of protection, but can give you the great benefit of not being spotted by undead mobs. That's right, you'll be able to walk by and not disturb most monsters, except other murmurs and the wither. You can also easily repair this with wool. Next I'll go through the enchantments included in this mod, and these are all for the straddle board so let's get to it. Straddle Jump is an enchantment which can give the rider of the straddle board higher jumps. There are three levels to this enchantment, and you could probably guess that the higher the level, the higher you jump. The next enchantment is called Lava Waxed, and this will give you fire resistance when using the straddle board, which is so useful as making high jumps can make you sink into the lava slightly, setting you on fire. Now this enchantment is called Serpent Charmer, and this will make any nearby bone serpent passive, making crossing lava lakes less stressful. This final enchantment for the straddle board is called Returning Board, and what it does is return the straddle board back to the player immediately after breaking. Now throughout this mod I haven't mentioned the banner patterns that can be created. Many are crafted with unique items only available from certain mobs. The bear pattern can be created with Hair of Bear, the Star Cross pattern can be created with Kangaroo Hide, the Union Jack Ensign pattern can be created with an Emu Feather. The Sun Symbol pattern can be created with Tattered Tarantula Hawkwing. And the Caption Band pattern can be created with Shed Snakeskin. So onto the final part of this mod, and this is the Super Secret Settings. This can be activated if you go to the Config Settings and enabling it at the bottom of the document to True from False. This adds and changes a couple of features to Alex's mobs. To start off with, we have the bear. And basically, you should be prepared as it can become creepy very quickly. When approached, your screen will be darkened and childlike music will start to play. And after a few seconds, you will be jump scared by Freddy Fazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's. There really isn't much else to this, so it can be a great prank to play on your friends. Another feature is that the Meep skin is the default skin for the Roadrunner. 
Now, there is another mob in this mod when the super secret settings are activated. This is the sea bear and can only be summoned when you are underwater wearing a sombrero, which shows as being upside down. You can keep yourself safe if you draw a circle in the sand with a stick. This is referenced to an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. I believe that is it for the super secret settings, but make sure to leave a comment down below if you find something else as there really is little information on it anywhere. That's it for Alex's Mobs. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. I will be uploading videos of when new updates of Alex's Mobs are released, as they are frequent and normally add a few mobs, so make sure to subscribe and stay updated. If you do want to suggest me a mod, please leave a comment down below or join my Discord server and suggest one to me there, and I'll catch you all in the next video.